CJ McCollum is officially a Pelican. You've got a lot of questions and we are going to answer them. What are all the details? Who's going to be starting? And what does it mean for this team going forward? We're going to break it all down in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans in NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, here with y'all on this Wednesday. Busy day yesterday, huh? CJ McCollum is a Pelican, and you've got a lot of questions, so we are going to answer them in today's show. Why'd the Pelicans make this trade? What are all of the specific details, right? Could they have done anything else? Will they do anything else? Could this trade expand? Who's going to start? We're going to answer all of those and more in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. And thank you for making Locked on Pelicans your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. No paywall, anything like that. We were there moments for you after the trade was announced by Woj and on Twitter. And today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Check out prizepicks.com. Use promo code MBA or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. All right, so we got the trade, C.J. McCollum coming to New Orleans. I kind of had been hinting that in yesterday's official show, and I'd heard Monday afternoon that this trade was basically done, that it was happening and they weren't really going to turn back from it. So if you noticed, I'm wearing the same clothes. In the emergency episode of Lockdown Pelicans, we had breaking down the C.J. McCollum trade. That one really looked at how he impacts the team this year and next year, basically from more play on the court than anything else. And we'll touch on that, and we're going to touch on that in the days to come, too. I really want to break down his three-point shooting and do a whole episode just solely around that. But we want to answer all the lingering questions. So if you want to just know how he's going to fit on the court, go check out the emergency episode talking about that. But I want to get into some of these other things because there's a lot of questions. But one thing is now out there, which I didn't, didn't have when I recorded the other day, what the entirety of the trade is. The Pelicans have acquired C.J. McCollum, Larry Nance Jr., and Tony Snell. And in exchange, New Orleans is sending Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Josh Hart, Didi Luzada, Tomas Sadoransky, a protected 2022 first-round pick, and two future second-round picks. So that 2022 first-round pick, right, it's owed to Charlotte if it doesn't fall in the lottery. And I had said this about a couple weeks ago. The Pelicans could trade the other protections to it. So Charlotte gets it if it's 15 or later. New Orleans was going to keep it if it was 1 through 14, but you could trade that 1 through 14 part. That's okay to do. And they basically did that. So it's protected 5 through 14. If it lands in the top four, the Pelicans keep this pick. But if it basically lands anywhere else, they will send that pick to the Portland Trailblazers or to the Charlotte Hornets, depending on where they kind of fall. That's really what it comes down to. If the Pelicans make the playoffs, it goes to Charlotte. If they don't make the playoffs, it's likely, unless they get some lottery luck, going to Portland. It's really that simple. If Portland doesn't get it this year, it gets basically kicked down the road to another first-round pick at some point. Basically, what they will get is a first-round pick for C.J. McCollum. And I think that's kind of the starting point when talking about this deal and the compensation. I thought they'd probably have to give up two firsts to go and get a guy like C.J. McCollum. Only one first is a really good deal for the Pelicans. Yeah, you know, maybe CJ's contract is kind of weighing this down a little bit and is a bit of a negative asset, but one first-round pick is pretty good. When you compare this to another trade, right, the Karis LeVert deal for the Cavaliers, they gave up a first for him, and he's not as good as CJ McCollum is, really. So when you look at what New Orleans did here, especially because they got Larry Nance Jr. in this, potentially, right, that really speaks to, I wouldn't say they fleeced the Portland Trailblazers, but they did well in this trade. They didn't give up nearly as much as I thought they would have needed to do. And it maybe also depends a little bit on how you value, how you value Larry Nance Jr. So this trade, as I spoke in yesterday's emergency episode, both for the now, 
helping them get that three-point shooter on a team that is really bad at three-point shooting that really needs a guy that can create his own offense. You add that to it, you're going for the 10th spot. So are the Sacramento Kings now after they made a blockbuster move. So this is going to help you this season. It's also going to help you next season when presumably you're going to have Zion Williamson all year long. And he fits perfectly. CJ McCollum fits perfectly with Zion. It, look, you want elite shooters. One, to make that team pay when you double and triple team him. But also because he's so good at unassisted threes, right? Just pure offense, spot up or uh, pull up offense. That if he has the ball in his hand, you have to put a guy on him wherever he is, like glued to him. That will create space for Zion Williams. And so this is good for next season when you're going to be, hopefully, entirely healthy as well. But it also sends a message to Zion Williamson, I think, right? I've talked about it. The The relationship between him and the organization, a little bit testy. Well, you just sent a big message to him that, hey, we're not dysfunctional. We're well run and we can pull off some things. We don't only make mistakes. We do a lot of things right. And this was definitely one that is right. This is a good trade for the New Orleans Pelicans. Also, CJ McCollum in the three-point shootout. That's kind of fun, too, in All-Star Weekend, so you'll get to see him there. So there you go. It works on three levels, this season, next season, and to maybe ease the relationship a little bit between Zion and the team. Win, 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 win right there, especially when you're not giving up that much for uh, CJ McCollum. So I think this was a... Great move overall, and one the Pelicans really had to make. I described it like this in yesterday's show, and I've said this to a couple people, right? It felt like at times, at times, this was, you know, a, a poker player that's running out of chips, and you get some cards, and it's not pocket aces, right? But it's a good enough hand to go all in on. And so at a certain point, you've just got to do it. I don't think you were going to get much better than CJ McCollum, to be perfectly honest. And now you still have additional things. They still do have the traded player exception that they could absorb someone into. Though I don't think they'll use that. We'll talk about that more maybe in tomorrow's show as well. So overall, just this was probably the best move available to New Orleans. I'm glad they went out and did it. Sounds like it was done basically Monday afternoon. They needed to finalize a couple of things. And now it is final. And that's worth keeping in mind for what we're going to talk about in the third segment. Some of the lingering questions. This deal is final. It's been announced paperwork to the league and everything. That is important. I'll explain why coming up a little later in today's show. So coming up next, though, when's C.J. McCollum going to play? What are some of the lineups going to look like? Does Devontae Graham go to the bench? Does Jackson Hayes stay at the four? Let's talk about it coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Before we get to that, though, today's episode of Locked On Pelicans brought to you by Prize Picks. All right, NBA fans. Are you looking for a daily fantasy option for the NBA? Then you need to try the award-winning app, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. I love this, and I know you will too. It's very simple. You pick two to five players and an over-under on their projections, and you can win up to 10 times on any entry, and it's just you versus the projected numbers. You're not playing against other players that do this full-time, have way more resources and like a bank of computer monitors, running algorithms and all of the stats. You see the numbers. You pick whether the guy's going to be above that or below it. It's really that simple, and entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. Prize Picks is safe. They offer quick and fast withdrawals as well, and you get to use the award-winning app on both the App Store or Google Play. And they have so many different props you can think of. Points scored, rebounds, steals, if you're a Herb Jones fan. And they allow mixed sports entries, so if you want to get in on the big game this weekend and some of the Pelicans over-unders, you can absolutely do it. They also have college basketball. You know, if it were still bowl season, college football. MLB, soccer, MMA, and more. And so for a limited time, Prize Picks has an exclusive no-brainer of an offer for all of our listeners. Our listeners get $50 for free if a player in your first Prize Pick entry scores a single point, but you must use the promo code NBA. That's right. This is an exclusive offer available to Locked On Pelicans listeners. Sign up today and use promo code NBA for $50 for free if a player in your first Prize Pick scores a single point. Brandon Ingram, anybody. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. All right, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen, and thank you for tuning in to yesterday's show. You were all so excited. You blew that show's listens and stuff out of the water, beating a lot of the national shows. 
you know where to come for the right information. We're not going to say stupid stuff about this team here, right? Like a lot of other national people are doing. And of course, the NBA trade deadline is this Thursday. Got a little bit started, uh, got started here a little bit early. Uh, February 10th at 2 p.m. Central. The Locked On NBA podcast will be covering it live from 1 to 3 p.m. Central. Join Kim Becker, John Krause, and Locked On Fantasy Basketball host Josh Lloyd to get analysis of every blockbuster move. Subscribe to the Locked On NBA YouTube channel and turn your notifications on so you know when we go live. All right, so we're breaking down all things when it comes to the C.J. McCollum deal. We know he can fit on the court well, and we'll break that more down in depth tomorrow and in the days to come. And if you need to, go give a listen to just the quick reactions, like 10, 15 minutes long. But let's talk about some of the lingering questions. And the first one is, when's C.J. McCollum going to play? I think it's going to be Thursday, to be perfectly honest. I would not have said that. I figured that this would not get finalized until Thursday, meaning you wouldn't see him probably till Saturday's game, crew de vue night here in New Orleans. So the paperwork got, got put in. This trade is official. CJ McCollum is a Pelican. It is that simple. And that means, unfortunately, Josh Hart and Nikhil are not anymore, which is kind of sad, especially when it comes to Josh Hart. So I am expecting him to play on Thursday. It sounds like CJ McCollum is like get, trying to get on a plane right now to fly to New Orleans and be ready to play and maybe even go through a practice today when you're listening to this show. Certainly a shoot around on Thursday. It might not. Things might get delayed a little bit, whether there's COVID protocols and things like that. But because the trade is official, he can be here and he can play. I think New Orleans realizes that they've got a tenuous grasp on the 10th spot and really want to get him in here and start trying to win games with him and get him acclimated and into the team. So I would expect him to be ready to go on Thursday. Now, in the case of Larry Nance Jr., he's been out with a knee injury. He's missed 16 straight games. He It was reported over the weekend that he had a little bit of a setback, so he's not healthy. I don't know when we will see him, but right now he's part of the team too. And so he would not shock me if when he gets healthy, he has significant minutes coming to him, I think. But what are the lineups going to look like? And I think this is the biggest question, and the Pelicans can go a number of different directions, and we'll learn a little bit more about this on Thursday. We might devote a little bit more time to this tomorrow as well. You know, do you move Devontae Graham to the bench and start C.J. McCollum at point guard? Brandon Ingram at the two, Herb Jones at the three, keep Jackson Hayes, who's playing incredible basketball right now, at the four, and Jonas Valanciunas at the five? Or do you start Devontae Graham, C.J. McCollum, who's much more of a two than a one, right? Not really a one at all, but he can handle the ball well enough. Brandon Ingram, Herb Jones, Jonas Valanciunas. With Jackson Hayes playing so well at the four, do they want to roll with this a little bit more? You know, he got the start against the Houston Rockets, and he played well in that game, I thought. That's something to really keep in mind. Or are you going to try and figure out what your lineups would look like with Zion Williamson back and just start doing that now? But it feels like when Zion is is out there, you almost certainly have to move Devontae Graham to the bench and maybe your starting lineup and we're getting ahead of ourselves here right we don't even have the Zion Williamson update whatever it is just yet do you run something like CJ McCollum Brandon Ingram at the two Herb Jones at the three Zion at the four Jonas at the five you know assuming he's healthy Larry Nance Jr. is more of a, a small five than a four so you could run him out there you know Jonas is one of your first subs off in comes a guy like Larry Nance Jr., then when you need to take Zion off, you can put Jax in there too. I'm not sure. They have a couple of different options. I'm curious. What do you think the starting lineup, say, for Thursday's game, if everyone's healthy other than Larry Nance, would be? Let me know in the YouTube comments below. That's something to really keep in mind here. It feels like Devontae Graham should be with the bench. It's felt like that for a little bit, although I don't know if he's actually going to be good in that role. So do you just kind of rip the Band-Aid off and do it right now? Maybe it's something to consider because they want to try and get as much continuity as possible and not mix things up to really have a big solid stretch run here to solidify their grasp on the 10th seed. Maybe, maybe even push to nine after a move like this, because this is a significant trade. Let me know in the comments below on YouTube. All right, coming up next, more lingering questions. Can this trade expand? The Pelicans now have an extra roster spot. How is that going to get used? And... The traded player exception. Let's break it all down. Coming up here next in today's episode. 
of Locked On Pelicans. But before we get to that, today's episode of Locked On Pelicans brought to you by Built Bar. This is the time of year that I've pretty much given up on all of my New Year's resolutions. I'm eating king cake like crazy right now. But I'm making it a little bit better because I am eating healthier because Built Bar makes it so easy to stick to my New Year's resolution of just trying to eat better. It almost feels like it's not really a resolution or anything like that because I enjoy eating the Built Bar so much. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar out there. These things are unbelievably healthy for you and you're going to think you're eating a candy bar. So when you have those sugar cravings, grab a Built Bar instead. Trust me, you're going to like that. And they have so many different delicious tasting flavors, including their Puff Bars. And if you haven't had one of these, you're really missing out on one of their best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein bar infused with marshmallow. They're fluffy. They're marshmallowy too. They're not just a protein bar. They're a treat and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. I love them. There's the cinnamony churro puff bar. There's coconut marshmallow. There's banana cream pie. They are all so good. These are going to be your new favorite bars. And again, all built bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. They're low in calories, high in protein. So replace your candy bars or some of your snacks with these. They're better and you're going to be shocked at how good they taste. So go to built.com, scroll down to the macros and you're going to see 130 calories, four grams sugar, four grams net carbs and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to other bars on the market. These are going to taste better. They're going to be better for you compared to a candy bar. No, you want to give them all a try. I love the mint brownie. Also, I have the coconut brownie chunk and the white chocolate raspberry cheesecake. So go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your next order. Again, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off over at built.com. All right, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. It was a heck of a day for New Orleans sports, right? Dennis Allen officially announced and unveiled press conference and everything as the Saints next head coach and Ross Jackson, host of the Locked on Saints podcast, is breaking down everything black and gold about all that big pivotal offseason for them. It's a fun time to be a New Orleans sports fan. All right, let's continue breaking down everything about the CJ McCollum trade, the lingering questions. One I've seen a lot is the trade expanding. Are the Pelicans done? They're not done, per se. There might be minor things, and I I can tell you as a fact. They're trying to make calls to other teams to try and see what they can do. But this trade is not expanding. It is done. It is official. It is a trade between the Pelicans and the Portland Trailblazers. I got the official release from Pelicans PR. When you get that in, when the team starts putting stuff on social media... It means it's official. It means that trade is done. So this will not be expanded to include Detroit and somehow get Jeremy Grant to the Portland Trailblazers via this trade. No Kevin Werder from the Atlanta Hawks, at least as part of this trade. Maybe separate deals. Maybe. But not as part of this trade. And so if the if this is the only move the Pelicans make at the trade deadline, it's not going to be for lack of trying. They want to do more. They really want to solidify this roster and add more to it. They have more picks that they can use. They have an extra roster spot. But what I would expect is going to end up happening with that extra roster spot only once we get till after Thursday, so at some point after that, is Jose Alvarado will be converted from his two-way contract to being just like an official member of the Pelicans, standard NBA contract. That means, should they make the postseason, he'll be able to play because he wouldn't be able to as a two-way guy right now. So this gives them the option to give him a full-time NBA deal, not a two-way guy. And I think we all agree that Jose Alvarado has earned it at this point. But that won't happen before the trade deadline. It probably won't happen like the day after the trade deadline either. They're going to wait on that as much as possible because, frankly, it'll save the Pelicans as much money or as much money as they can that way. They still have the trade player exception, but by taking on more salary, that complicates it just a little bit. You're not going to bring back a guy for $17 million for $15 million right now. The Pelicans are also right now projected with the roster they have currently to be $7.3 million under the luxury tax probably closer than they want to be you're not worried about paying it just yet but it means you've got to be a little bit careful with salary that you might take on in the future it means they're certainly we know this already going to operate as an over the cap team meaning they're not going to be as busy in free agency maybe adding two guys kind of at the most 
now that there's not really a ton of money coming off of the books for them or anything like that. So I think really the next big thing is to try and acquire someone else, whatever that might be, maybe using the traded player exception, ideally sending out more salary, but who else are they really going to trade? It was Garrett Temple, but I don't think they really want to trade Jackson Hayes at this point. Certainly not Herb Jones. So we'll see what ends up happening, but they're trying. It's not for lack of trying if nothing else gets done, but this deal is not being expanded whatsoever at this point. So this is kind of the roster that we're seeing, you know, and CJ McCollum is here. And look, before, before we wrap up the show, it's really sad to see a guy like Josh Hart go. Josh Hart was awesome with this team. You know, this was a guy who fully bought in from the moment that Anthony Davis trade was announced. Was immediate. He ordered some Pelican slides like right away, had them at his house like the next day and was wearing them before the trade was official. Just completely bought in, left it all out on the court every single night. It sucks to see a dude like that go. It absolutely does. It was cool to see him on the bench in the game wearing a Brandon Ingram jersey, not on the bench, courtside, right? Because he couldn't be with the team. Wearing a Brandon Ingram jersey, supporting his, you know, kind of still teammates, but not really like that. But it sucks. It's just sad to see him go. I think that's a guy that Pelicans fans will always root for. Look, Nikhil was up and down. It was a roller coaster, a roller coaster I'm kind of happy to be off of, but I hope the best for him. He shows potential there. He was going through a bit of a stretch where it seemed to kind of work, be working for him. I was encouraged by that. But now he maybe just gets a new change of scenery, a new role with this Portland team, and hopefully he can kind of be the best that he can be. And we'll see. So more coming later this week. We'll talk more about the potential for Larry Nance Jr. We'll talk more about CJ McCollum shooting. We might dive into some lineups a little bit more too. There's a lot to talk about with this trade. So make sure you're subscribed to Locked on Pelicans wherever you get your podcast and available on YouTube as well. And thank you. We got over 2,500 subscribers on the Locked on Pelicans YouTube channel, which means probably on Thursday, I'm going to do a fun joke video. I don't get to throw a lot of humor out here all the time given the way the nature of the show works, but I'm going to have some, I, I, I think it's funny, for you all regarding someone on the team in Thursday, and we'll have a little bit of fun with it. It's more of a joke video that you can send to your friends that are, I don't know, maybe Miami Heat fans or anyone kind of pining after Brandon Ingram. So I appreciate you all listening. I appreciate all the support and you guys blowing up the show the past couple of days. It's been a lot of fun. Big Exciting times to be a Pelicans fan right now, and we're going to be covering it all here over at Locked On Pelicans. So as always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, and I'll be back with you all tomorrow to keep talking about CJ McCollum and what's next for this Pelicans team.